Hello again, uh, it's Bob Chu from Stewart Boatworks and Isla Mirada Boatworks. We're here with another latest launch. This one being another one of our popular 24 Isla Mirada Bay Boats, the 24 Mirada. Uh, this one's extra special, built for a local guy in Jupiter. Uh, you'll see this boat sail fishing, kite fishing off of Jupiter, and you'll see it down, he'll run it, fish Loxahatchee, for big snook and he'll run it down to the Everglades, which he often fishes um, skinny water for snook and tarpon. So uh, multifunctional boat, second station, single 350 Verado, really nicely outfitted. Can't wait to show it to you here this morning. So before I get up in this 24 Murata, I wanna just discuss the color combination. Ice blue hull side, white rub rail with the stainless insert, the white deck cap. On the second stations, ice blue underside to match the hull. And of course, the white on top, you know, the white 350 Verado, white Minn Kota, and it's all sitting on this custom welded float on deluxe trailer. It's just really clean, really simple, the, the perfect combination. So not only for hardcore fishing, but this boat's going to be used in a, you know, fun boating a a attitude as well. We've got a killer stereo I'll show you. It's got the, the full stern seat with removable cushions, removable backrest. But to begin with, um, he uh, ordered the boat with the swim platform and a telescopic swim ladder comes out, folds out, comes back in, secures down and out of the way. Really nice feature, especially if you do a lot of snorkeling or diving, where you actually have a platform as opposed to just the pull out ladder out of the transom, which a lot of our boats get. Um, he opted for a Bob's jack plate. We typically do Atlas, but that's typical of, of who we are and what we do. Semi-custom, you want something a little different, I mean, that's an easy change. So we went with the Bob's here. Um, Two power poles, of course, mounted on the brackets on the jack plate, um, across the stern. So relative to the hardcore fish as aspect, the center live well is 30 gallons. That's standard. Um, and it's lit, circular, and, and it's dead center here. Typically remove this cushion, slide it off the track on the front, get right to the live well. But optional on this boat, and the way he chose to have it done was both of the outboard boxes are also live wells. So you have 35 gallons on each side, 35, 35, and 30, 100 gallons of live bait across the stern of the boat. Um, he also had us insulate the outboard boxes for you know more insulation to use them in, in an application where he's offshore fishing, typically use either or both as a fish box. Um, we also have bubblers in these, so for those times when he goes to the Everglades, if he wants to, you know, have if there's any issues keeping uh, shrimp alive or things of that nature, you know, he can throw on the bubblers. So super versatile family boat, fun boat. Quickly take this stuff out of the way. Hardcore fish boat. Um, so as we move forward, uh, the bird saw properly sized leaning post live well. You've seen on standard item on our boats, four rod holders, the drink holders, a little rigging station, um, room below for a cooler, storage, of course, under the, under the seat. Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, getting to the helm. So now the boat starts getting really interesting. Um, at the helm, he has uh, the Seastar Optimus electric power steering and primarily because of the second station, kind of drove that decision. Uh, makes this boat, you know, spin with one finger. It's a beautiful application. Um, Edson satin finished wheels, both in the tower and below. Fusion Apollo stereo head system. Two Garmin 12 inch screens, multi-function screens. Um, the vessel view for the Merc, uh, below as well as above. And of course, what we're known for is the use of the C-Zone application, our digital switching system. On the Isla Mirada boat, of course, 
Uh, one feature that's different than our Stewart boats is because there's these, so many of these boats get trolling motors. Uh, this actually has a readout for your voltage on the uh, house battery one, house battery two, and most importantly, your trolling motor, your, your 36 volt system to show you what the status is of those batteries. Um, of course, Lenco trim tab switch with indicators, your power pole control as well as remote. 24 and a half inch glove box as standard. This now, this lever here opens up the two step um, non skidded door, which gives you access into mostly rigging components, nothing that you would get into on a regular basis. Uh, so super functional, straightforward helm. Um, on the console, uh, he opted for low windscreen, which was just to keep the wind from blowing through because there's so much windage anyway. So that, that's a nice little feature. Um, down each side of the console, he went with four rod holders per side. And the hard top or second station, as you can see, has the slots for those four rod tips. Really functional. Um, as we move on to the hard top, the second station itself, you know, it has all the hard top features positioned for four, six and a half inch uh, diameter speakers. These are JLs, of course. Uh, handrail is standard per side. Uh, good for getting up here. If you're having to run on the gunnel or something, you're looking from the side here. Maybe you're not up in the second station, but somebody else wants to get a little bit off the sole. Uh, aft spreader, Lumatech forward spreader molded in, not bolted on. Uh, the four rod holders across the back, your anchor light, VHF antenna, and your stereo antenna, digital uh, antennas. Um, Super clean overhead LED lights, super clean, super simple, uh, straightforward, beautiful boat. So now around to the front of the console. Um, so it starts with a 65 Yeti with a custom lumbar cushion. We'll just And it's not secured down. It can be so chosen too if the customer wants, but typically we, we don't secure them unless, you know, request it. Um, because they kind of stay in place, um, especially with ice and drinks and so forth. Then getting to the front of the console, the front door opens, super clean, all gel coated finish inside. Um, this owner wanted his VHF tucked inside the console because he doesn't intend to use it a lot, just if he's well offshore or back in the Everglades and wants to talk to somebody. The amps for the stereo system, which we'll talk about in a bit. Down below on the lower door, um, get to the shelf that's right above the four Group 31 North Star AGM batteries. Uh, two are standard and the, addition, the other two are part of the trolling motor package. This, somebody had the C-Zone door open, so that itemizes all the things on your helm. If you have a problem with anything, Operating from the helm area on the switches or from the Garmin screen, you come below here, find the issue, pop this boot off, pop that plate off, you'll find a automotive type blade fuse in there. Simply pull it out, drop it down an inch, reinsert it, and now that item will work on an analog system. So it's literally a backup system to the digital design system of the C-Zone, digital switching. Battery switches, uh, as you can see, you can get to them from the top drawer, so you don't have to move the cooler or the bottom drawer to get to it. Super clean, as the way we like it, all gel-coated surface. Now, how to access the second station? A couple ways of doing it. We give you a fold-down step and another fold-down step. This is standard. Uh, I don't know, for myself, I tend not to use this. And you could choose to have this built without it. Um, I tend to just use that step. You can go from rod locker to cooler to this step. Miss that 
bigger step and right up into the second station. So needless to say, great view from here. You can run the boat at high speeds from this location because of all the running characteristics of this boat that we didn't even talk about, um, but we have in other videos, super soft, super dry, and super stable. Don't know how you can have all those three things in one hull. We didn't design the hull, but we can prove it to you that you can have all three of those things in one hull design. So up here in the second station, the second Edson wheel, toggle switch for the jack plate, Lenco trim tab switches with indicators, your power pole switch, of course your binnacle, your uh, kill switch, uh, digital tachometer up above, and control for the fusion stereo. Super clean, nice, low profile. When, when we started building Isla Maradas, we took this second station and we lowered it. Um, from the size of the box that it was and we changed some of the ergonomics here at the wheel So now it's comfortable it's functional makes makes really good sense Do have one toggle switch over here on the side and that's for this rigid light bar um, Another switch below of course for the light bar as well Up above you've got of course the seat natural spot to put your feet um, Nice backrest Two rod holders, sliding sunshade, which slides closed and locks, um, and then access to the VHF antennas. And of course, your rod tips would be coming through the top of the hard top here. Uh, just nice, super clean. So in the bow of the boat, um, you can see the use uh, that we use that sea deck for all your gaskets. So it's a big landing, super rigid, really a nice clean look to it. Start with a very deep anchor locker. In the anchor locker, we actually have an anchor chute so that the anchor has a place to land and secure itself. And then all around that is a huge locker that allows a lot of line and chain. We also have, of course, a stainless steel spot uh, ring to turn tie off the bitter end. Um, then moving aft, storage compartment, Another storage compartment below that, a storage compartment within a storage compartment. Uh, this all section, of course, is drained. Um, this can be used for any variety of things for, for storage purposes. Uh, moving aft, you get to the rod lockers. Now, the rod lockers um, are kind of unique. Uh, most boats you see in the rod lockers, they want to have tip tubes and places for designate rods. A lot of times they don't work ergonomically. It's pretty funny, you see him at a boat show or on the water, a guy's boat, and then he goes to put rods in and they don't fit. So it's kind of interesting. Now we sell a lot of boats to guides um, because of the multi-functionality of the boat that like sailfish to sea trout in the same day. That's kind of a saying of one of our guides in the Keys. Um, so what we do is the rod locker is actually designed that it's completely open. Take a bundle of rods, go ahead and drop them in. No worry about guides catching on each other or catching on a tube, trying to fit one in a particular shape. And they simply slide in, slide out. Um, sea deck surface on the bottom of the rod locker keeps everything you know, in good shape, even when running offshore in rough water. So as we work aft, um, we also have a locker in the floor here. Uh, this locker, also can be used for a variety of things. Just talked to a guide out of uh, Louisiana just this week, and he says he uses that for a fish box, which is interesting. Uh, wasn't necessarily designed as such, but that's what he does. Puts big Kobe in there and red snapper. Um, a lot of people put their Coast Guard equipment in there. So there's a, a variety of things you can do with toolboxes, anything heavy. Maybe you want to keep it as low as possible in the boat. So this kind of leads us to uh, the stereo system. So he wanted a very serious stereo, two 10 inch subwoofers, uh, 10 other speakers in the boat, four in the hard top, six around the, the uh, deck of the boat, two uh, JL audio amplifiers, and, and that fusion stereo head. Super, super quality stereo. Um, makes for a fun boat. 
Uh, some of the other things, I, I, I'm looking around, I missed a couple things. Trolling motor, I wanna get to that real quick. I'll lower these. The cool thing about the trolling motor is, depending on if you use the boat or use the trolling motor on a regular basis, and you wanna pri primarily leave it on the boat, with this very clean method of running the wiring right close to the quick removal bracket. And we run it right through the deck and then run it back. And of course, we have that excellent connection up high in the anchor locker aft. Um, if you are somebody that uses the trolling motor one day and the next day says, hey, I'm gonna take it off and switch back and forth, then we would just simply do what most people do is run the wire here, run it through the anchor locker and back to that connection. But we, we talked that through. I talked that through with every customer. How are you gonna use the boat? How are you gonna use the trolling motor? And we wire it accordingly, entirely up to them. Uh, looking around the deck too, I see that, um, forgot to mention, so he kite fishes and, um, out of Jupiter Inlet for sailfish. So we have six rod holders in the gunnels here, in addition to the four that are standard aft. Um, also, uh, Yeti size cup holders. He opted for two per side, uh, as well as the standard size cup holders that come in the, the helm area. So all in all, I mean, this is as full blown of a hardcore fish boat as you'd ever want to see. Uh, but at the same time, there's enough comfort touches, and the stereo system, stern seat and cushions, removable and so forth. The Yeti cup holders. I mean, it's it's a full blown family boat as well, if uh, if that's what you want. So I think the 24 Murata offers you great diversity in both those extremes. 100 gallons of live bait capacity. Um, so upper 50 mile an hour boat with the second station. Um, so really, really functional. And all at the same time, I can't ever forget it's resin infused wired with digital switching system and it is the softest riding almost immediately on plane um, super dry almost impossible to get this boat to pound uh, and stable uh, we can fish four people on the same side of the boat and i do that on sea trials to demonstrate the stability of the boat uncanny i can't sit here and explain to you how the bottom is capable of doing what it's capable of perfectly balanced boat, uh, four and a half. Um, just gotta come experience it. If you're in the market for a quality, semi-custom bay boat, please give us a call. Bob Chu, Stewart Boat Works, Isla Murata Boat Works, right here in Stewart. And we'll sit down and we'll lay out a boat for you and build you a dream boat. So thank you very much. We'll see you again.